fiddling with my baby micro camera. I uh, had some interesting footage I thought I shot. Um, you've got two buttons on this thing and I carried it to film with. This one turns it on and off and that one you press that um, when you want to take a snapshot or want a video. What I didn't know, you have to press it and hold it to do that. Just for like a second and let go and it starts filming. Uh, I had it set up and everything. Um, Brandon and I, my oldest son and I, had to go to Ada. He had to go see his personal physician. One uno momento. We drove over there. Oops. Let me move this back so I'm not hitting it. We drove over there en route. Now well, that's too far away. Let's We, I filmed from the stoplight you come to when you first get to uh, Ada, coming the way we do. I filmed from there to the Indian Hospital, Native American Health Care Center. Um, it, uh, while we were going, some idiot came off an access road and almost collided with us. And Brandon let out a, a bunch of expletive deleteds. He cussed a bunch. And he said, oh, I didn't know you were filming. Well, I wasn't. I didn't know I wasn't. I thought I was. But um, I'm still figuring out that micro camera. I've got another expensive camera behind me that's in the case. I'm probably going to start using it to film some stuff so that it's not sitting and not being used. Anyway, I did that and then I set it up and I filmed a vlog at the hospital. The only problem was I didn't have any reading glasses with me and I thought that I pressed the button and it was recording. It wasn't. That's uh, I really need to get me, my best friend Jerry has glasses, he wears their photo gray, in other words they turn dark with the sun. The top above it is uh, just clear glass I think, and the bottom are, are uh, for reading. And they're seamless bifocals and I probably need to get me some of those, but I'm so rough on stuff. I mean. And I see really good way out yonder, and so does Jerry. Um, but I don't see worth a crap up close. And normally I've got a little plastic case that has pinch on my nose reading glasses, and I didn't have that with me today. And that's on me. I should carry them with me all the time. I don't. I've got two sets. Um, I have work work I've got to do today. I'm not going to let you see, read that. But that is half of the first page of a 17 page summation I'm supposed to be writing. And I get interrupted so frequently I can't do it. I'm not going to work on it today, but I am tomorrow. And I probably will have to lock the door to get it done. Um, it's no good for the kids to come out here. We need crackers or we need a, a tea. I think there's one herbal tea, maybe two left in the fridge. I bought two 12 packs. They were gone in two days. And I don't blame people for wanting a little treat at all. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to give it a couple of weeks. 
I'm going to do my dead level best to find the components I need, the parts I need to repair my van. And if I can't find them, then it's getting parked and I'm going to have my son Chris pull the motor, the transmission, all the electronics, the rear end out of it, and I will borrow a, a backhoe and I will turn it into a storm shelter. All I've got to do to do that is uh, put plywood over the window, screw it, and screw the door shut, and uh, put a solar deal with some lights on it and have a storm shelter, a freighty hole, if you will, that we can all get into. Uh, cheap way of, of doing a, a storm shelter without going to the expense of paying out five, six thousand and getting one. And it would be a lot more comfortable. Uh, but I'm confident I can find the components. I don't really want to get rid of my van. I've had it a long time. It's a gift to me from my son Nick. I love the truck. However, uh, if I can't get it repaired, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'll be going and buying a pickup truck. Uh, I prefer vans ever since, well, since baby girl, Sissy, Nick's ex-wife has known me, I've always driven vans. I love vans. That's my preferred uh, means of transportation. But I'll tell you something. The cost of gas just keeps shooting up. It was four fifty nine today. It was four fifty. Well, you might as well say um, four sixty. Yesterday was four forty nine point nine. Today's four fifty nine point nine. Went up a dime. Four sixty a gallon. It's not going to stop, folks. It's going to get worse and worse. The cost of living is going to get worse and worse. I explained something to Brandon, my son. We saw three, three semis parked on the side of the road going over there, and all three of them had uh, they'd had blowouts and uh, were waiting on someone to bring them a spare. I have explained. on this vlog before you have to make a minimum and I mean minimum of 14 percent profit to uh, keep your business going. Profit is the key word there. You have to make an increase over what you've got invested. You've got to constantly. And if you don't, you're not in business. What you've got is an expensive hobby. Uh, Trucking companies, J.B. Hunt, they still have uh, a trucking company. They are one of the biggest ones in the United States, but they saw the handwriting on the wall before the Hunt brothers got in trouble with Congress. They bought their own tire reclamation plant. What's a reclamation plant? It's where you put a new belt around it revulcanization plant. Uh, you do it like that, regardless of who made the truck tire, they're very short-lived. And what I mean by that, it is nothing to put a million miles a year on a trailer that you're just dragging. Nothing at all when you have a trucking company. It's nothing to put three quarters of a million miles a year on the truck pulling those trailers. You have to be constantly on the go. You have to. That's how you make money. A lot of the independent truck drivers have folded up. Um, I have a friend that lives in Spokane, Washington. Uh, he used to watch the vlog. I don't know that he is still. Um, he does have a small YouTube channel. But he got a hold of me to ask what diesel prices were down here about a week ago, a week, ten days ago. 
we were on the phone. When I talked to him, I said, I don't know. I don't have anything that uh, drives a diesel. Well, when I did, I found that it was over five bucks a gallon. Well, I don't know what it is now. I don't have anything that takes diesel fuel. In Spokane a week, ten days ago, the diesel fuel he was having to buy, and he's got a trucking business, $9.61 a gallon for road grade. It's a little cheaper than that for farm use. Um, a lot of folks just swear by diesel. Well, the engines do, like the motors do, last longer than an internal combustion engine unless your internal combustion engine is being driven on propane. But propane's real expensive. The thing about propane versus uh, injectors or carburetor or uh, uh, throttle body, propane doesn't dirty up the motor. It just doesn't. But um, finding propane to run said vehicle from is hard to do. My buddy Jerry's got a dump truck that runs off of propane and he's got another dump truck that's down right now that runs off of diesel. There's a channel I watch called Red Poppy Wrench. The guy that has the channel is named Heath Skinner. It's his birthday today, and I wished him happy birthday, but he's a diesel head. He, if he had his way about it, everybody would be driving diesel trucks and cars. <coughs> <coughs> Two things about diesel I don't like. One is if you live in cold country, you play hell trying to get your vehicle to start. Sorry about the AG double hockey stick slipped out. Um, in real cold, severe weather, your uh, glow plug will not function properly to get that truck to start. Heath had a couple of videos about that on his channel. He lives up in southeast Idaho and they have real severe weather up there during the winter. Well, he bought his wife, uh, Cedar, a brand new Jeep that it has a diesel motor in it, but they didn't have many problems with it. Excuse me. And they bought him a big diesel storage tank and a big, a couple of propane tanks. I understand that. Diesel keeps, they have an additive you put in it that it keeps a lot longer than gasoline will, especially gasoline that has alcohol in it. The food for thought, I'm an oldster. I don't know if any of you other than maybe Chris Kimball and Monty Jones remember when ethyl gasoline was all the, the clean burning ethyl. Well, what ethyl was was alcohol in the gas. And a lot of people don't believe that, but it was. So it's been around for a while. That was the super premium back then. I remember when I was a kid buying fuel for my Harley Davidson. I was 15 and I paid nine cents a gallon in Chickasha, Oklahoma for the gasoline for my Harley Davidson. It, uh, and I had a bunch of motorcycles. That was my second favorite. Um, uh, my favorite was a 750 Kawasaki. They called them killer Kawasaki's. That thing was fast. The Harley was for cruising, not for racing. But I always had a need for speed because I was stupid when I was younger. Not so much so anymore. Uh, 
folks, it's not going to get any cheaper to live anytime soon. You're going to see grocery prices just go out the roof, unfortunately. Linda's worried she had this June, middle of June. She's not planted a garden yet. I am crippled. She's crippled. We can't go out and build a fence around the raised bed garden that we were going to do. And when Brandon and Nicholas are off work, they're too tired to do it. But guess what? This week they're going to have to do it. We've got to get that fenced. We've got to get it filled with dirt. We've got to get some stuff in the ground. And uh, I had Aurora. There's a place attached to my office right in that corner. That corner right there where the fence attaches to my my office corner and you open that the poultry can get into our yard of the house and I had Aurora do that why? because last night at midnight 30 my wife says did you buy chicken feed today? no I will I was going to today but I, first of all they got 30 minutes and they're closed and I don't have time to go do it and I might go to Tractor Supply and take somebody with me to get uh, land crumbles and scratch there. Um, like I said, I've got so many people encroaching on my time on my actual job, I've got half a page of about 17 pages. If I really cut it close, 14 pages of a summation I've got to write, then I've got to get it sent off, and then I can get paid 30 days after I send it off. It, uh, I don't, and I've decided I'm done with being a consultant after this job. When it's over, no more. Uh, I'm bar barely ambulatory. Uh, I, most people have problems if they're diabetic with their feet getting numb and the feeling going out of the feet. I've never had that problem. What I've got a problem with right now, both my arms from the elbows down, I can't feel them when I get up in the morning. I can tell them what to do. Mentally, I have to concentrate and say, make a fist. Uh, the neuropathy in both my forearms and hands and wrists is pretty bad and like I explained to Benjamin or to Brandon I'm not complaining folks I'm just letting you know how it is with me on a scale of 1 to 10 10 I'm screaming and need to go to a hospital I am normally at a level 5 level 6 and I mean every day daily uh, I've had that much damage to my body so uh, I watch what I'm doing I can't physically exercise except for swimming so we're gonna get that pool done today and tomorrow it is getting done once I've got this uploaded Sorry about that. I'm going in the house and that pool's getting cleaned out. If they have to put shorts on and crawl into it and dip it out a bucket at a time, that's what's going to have to be. It is getting cleaned out. That way I can buy a filter for it, we can fill it, and we can uh, start using it. That is integral to my health and it's integral to Linda's health, even though she doesn't know that. Um, That's pretty much all I've got to say today. I'm sorry about being a little terse. Um, like I said, always something taking my time. And I have to grab time when I can. But 
I want all of you watching this to know that I do love you. I do. This old crippled, fat, ugly, fat old crippled guy loves you with his whole heart. I do. And I want God to bless you as much as you can stand. I want your, your catch pail. Do you know what a catch pail is? Catch pail is a pail that they would put out under the eaves of a uh, roof. Usually they're big pails, uh, about five gallon, like the size of a five gallon bucket, usually made of wood, and they'd set it out under the eaves of the house. They were homemade and they would make a lot of them. They would make sure the wood swole so they'd hold water. And they would catch extra water doing that, especially when they lived in the country where it rained a lot. But that's a catch pail. Well, I want the good Lord God Almighty to bless you with more blessings than your catch pail can hold. God bless you. I love you. Be kind and bye.